Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be starting a new game on the channel. Uh, this is one I've been sort of trying to um, find the time to, to play for quite a while actually. It's been out, uh, it came out in mid-July, uh, so a couple of weeks at this point. Um, but yeah, this is Vampire Therapist. Uh, it's a sort of visual novel style game, but I think it's got a... Uh, I mean, it's kind of all there in the title, isn't it? But it's got a, a real sort of angle on... Uh, you know, sort of psychiatry and psychotherapy, that sort of thing, trying to help uh, these immortal creatures of the night <laughs> get through their through their afterlife, or their unlife, I suppose you could call it. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be really good. I'm looking forward to playing it. Let's um, let's dive into new game. Vampire therapist explores or touches on sensitive topics such as war, abuse, addiction, sexual oppression, suicidal ideation, religion, and of course, death. These may be uncomfortable or upsetting for some readers. We recommend that readers with a history of trauma related to any of these topics approach the game with caution. Naturally, a game about vampires will also involve blood and uh, other themes. Strong language is also present. Vampire therapist was developed in consultation with licensed therapists, but it should not be considered a substitute for therapy. Unless you're a vampire. <laughs> With that disclaimer, let's dive My in. My name is Sam Walls, and I'm a dead man. Well, kinda dead at least. See, I'm a vampire. Now, if you think that means all that Dracula hooey, like hissing, wearing skin-tight leather, and hunting mortals for sport, I wouldn't blame you one bit. That's exactly the sort of thing I did in my younger years with my former gang. And let me tell you, a vampire who's good with a gun can be a real terror. I got lucky, though. I met some kind mortals who saw beyond my fangs. They taught me my letters and showed me how my thinking was keeping me from finding any kind of peace. After they passed on, I roamed America's majestic wilderness for nigh on 90 years, figuring out myself and what it means to be a vampire. And I found revelation. What I realized was, it ain't fangs that make us monsters. It's the self-defeating ways we think. Anywho, as the world started getting smaller, my old vampire gang tracked me down. Them being my kin, I wanted to help them see the world like I did, but they still have the same monster mindset I used to have. Good thing I'm a quick draw. But I got hooked up with this newfangled internet thing, and mm. found a vampire who's helping my kin find their way. A fella named Andromachos, supposed to be 3,000 years old. He invited me to come out to Europe to learn from him. I figure someone older than time has got to have the answers. I'm going on a trip, I guess. This feels like my opportunity to do some good in the world. I've been lucky, and now it's time to give back. Vampires ain't monsters. Or at least, they don't have to be. And come hell or high water, I'm going to prove it to them. <laughs> cool. It's a good setup. So we are the therapist. As you might have guessed from that. Leipzig, 2024. Well, I think this is the address. Number 27, uh, clean flitter mouse stream? Little Bats. Little. Flader Mouse is about, I think. Little Bat Street. Sure is a hell little of a Bat is the name of the developers. Right? People stay up late here. Wait a minute. These folk are vampires. I better watch myself. Uh, good nobbin, folks. Mm -hmm. Speaking the English? Yeah, hello, Alta. Are you here to party with us at the hottest club? Uh, fans of Critical Role may recognize that voice. Uh, Reinhardt is voiced by uh, Matthew Mercer. Uh, it's a party. Uh, let's ask about Andromac Andromachos. I'm looking for Andromachos. You mean the club owner? Yeah, that's why we are here. If you're lucky, he will invite us to the private party at the end of the night. Well, what happens there? Mm, I think maybe it is too kinky for Americans <laughs> to hear. Uh, we could ask about the club. Well, what's so special about this club? Immernacht is the greatest club aller Zeiten. The owner makes sure everyone has a good time. If anyone acts without respect, they are banned from the club forever. You are free to do and be whatever you like. As long as you are harming no one. And I hear that they are now attracting sexy old cowboys. <laughs> Shh, Maxi. He is old enough to be your grandfather. Oh, come on now. You're just flattering me. I'm only a couple hundred years old. Oh, my God. He is so cute, Reinhardt. 
can I keep him? I don't think what I'm wearing will fit the dress code. The cowboy look is total sexy, but you will get a bit sweaty. I hope we will all get a bit <laughs> sweaty. Good thing we run a little on the cold side, huh? <laughs> don't worry, my liebling. We make each other warm. Heinhardt, stop. Don't scare the American. I want to do that. Maxi leaves schnurz so naughty tonight. <laughs> no, you are the naughty one. Oh, I definitely ain't an American no more. I can cut loose. What kind of party is this? It's the kind where we dance all night and get sexy. Oh, we're them kind of vampires. Ach so, there are better things to suck than blood, or the... Mm. Uh... Or though we have to get past the bouncer first. If we do not, I'm thinking our night is ruined. Oh, wait a sec. There's something about what she just said. I can feel it. It reminds me of one of my revelations about the funny patterns in the way we vampires think. Well, let's see. One type of thinking I noticed I called hot branding. That's when we brand ourselves with names we can't get rid of. There's high noon mind. That's when we treat a situation like it's a do or die showdown. And there's saloon thinking. That's when we act either helpless or invincible, like we've just drunk a pint of moonshine. I can always check my journal if I need examples. I kept all my notes about the funny ways we vampires think in there. I think I know which one of them funny ways they're thinking in, though. Hold on, compadres. You seem like the kind who can make their own fun. I don't want to have my own fun. Imenacht is the only place to be on Friday night. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the examples. Private property, do not read. Reward if found. Cowboybloodsucker at vmail.com. Okay, uh, wait a minute. How do I turn the pages? No? Um... Was it high noon, high noon mind, maybe? Do or die situation? <laughs> Amigos, you're putting too much weight on this thing. It's a nightclub, not a high noon showdown. The night's full of possibilities. Mm, Reinhardt, I don't know what this means, but I like the way the sexy American talks. You make us think that maybe it is better we haven't gotten into the club, because we are now meeting you. <laughs> hey, if meeting me makes your night better, I'm glad we met. Uh, I really gotta find Andromachos, though. You have to get past the bouncer. He decides who gets in and who doesn't. And he hasn't looked our way all night. Maybe I'll have a little word with him. Excuse me, friend. I hear you're the man to talk to around these parts. <laughs> uh, I'm here to see Andromachos. <laughs> have fun, mate. Hey, thanks, amigo. You have yourself a fine night, you hear? Cowboy, what about us? <clears throat> yeah, sure, they're friends of mine. Have fun, mate. Well, <laughs> come on, you two. We ain't got all night. Yeah. We got him. Dang, awful loud in here. Come on, my liver. Dance with us. Oh, you kids have fun. I'll catch up with you later. Tarnation, I'd rather hear a gopher giving birth to this. <laughs> I better talk to whoever's slinging drinks in this here saloon. They ought to know where Andromachos is. But pardon me, ma'am. Well, well, look at you. We get a lot of 80s fashion in here, but not usually the 1880s. What can I get you, cowboy? The special's Red Bull and vodka. You down? I never drink Red Bull. I'm actually looking for the owner. Uh, he around tonight? Might be. What do you say your name was? The same walls, begging your pardon. Hmm, Sam Walls, huh? I don't think I know anything about a Sam Walls. After all, I'm just a know-nothing bartender. I can't remember what you said about hot branding. I really want to, um... Oh, here we go. I've got to use the arrow keys. Uh, I found this old notebook and figured I'd take it with me to Europe. I figure it'll help me organize my thoughts. I separate it into sections so I can jump to them right quick. That way, when I need to get to a particular section of my notes, all I've got to do is hop over to that section. Easy as falling off a horse. Falling off a horse is real easy. Okay, let's have a look at these cognitive distortions. I realized we vampires can think in funny ways sometimes, like reality's right in front of us and we just can't see it. Heck, pretty sure it's all humans who do that, not just vampires. We do think funny thinking in particular ways, so I figured I'd write them down so I don't forget them. I'll include examples so I remember how they work. So high noon mind, which I think we kind of figured out previously. Sometimes things can seem black and white, win or lose, famine or feast, live or die. Like everything's a big showdown. It can feel like we've only got two options, winning the day or ending up with a stake in the heart. That's high noon mind. 
It's thinking in extremes and ignoring the in-between. We stress ourselves out when stakes are high. Okay. And what about saloon thinking? A lot of us bloodsuckers have a habit either of feeling responsibility or soul control, or of feeling completely ho hopeless. Thing is, usually neither is true. Feeling hopeless don't mean we're powerless, and feeling untouchable don't mean we're invincible. A saloon thinking either way, our real capabilities are somewhere in between. Hot branding, sometimes call ourselves awful names. I'm a failure, I'm unlikable, it's like burning ourselves with a big old branding iron. Every time we look at ourselves, we keep seeing those names. Hot branding is just calling ourselves names that do no good. I missed that shot, I'm sorry. So I think, yeah, I think she's doing hot branding stuff. Uh, my client notes. When I start getting therapy clients, I'll put my notes about them here. Sounds good. And my journal, just for writing my ramblings. While I'm on this big trip, not my official notes. Uh, ain't nothing more to read. Okay, well, let's catch up with what he's been doing to this point. March 14th. It's been about a week since I boarded the Monster of the Seas cruise ship, and i got to say, I feel finer than frog hair. People are eating and screwing like there's no tomorrow on account of the fact that we're in the middle of the ocean. I've drunk from more necks in the last week than I can count. And since the ship's open all night, I rode a water slide for the first time in my life. Unlife, sorry. People were laughing at me for saying yee-haw, but what else do you say with an, to an experience like that? March 22nd. Landed in Rotterdam the other day, in, Am in Amsterdam now, arranging transportation for my coffin. Did some vampire sightseeing. Apparently this place has been accepting of heathens like us for a long time. I went to a vampire coffee shop. They funnel in the stoners from upstairs to a secret club, and everyone has themselves a grand old time. Gave me the munchies for something fierce. I could go for some blood chips, extra sodium if you please. Mmm. April 9th. Writing from Berlin today. I head to Leipzig tomorrow, but figured I should check, check things out here. They got a club here where people are up all night doing all kinds of kinky stuff. I'm pushing a quarter of a millennium in years, but these folks could give me some lessons and did. I met some fine folk too. Apparently they've got a nice art scene here. There's even local funding for video game development. Ain't this some kind of world? I can't believe people are still paying, playing Star Invaders and whatnot. I like it here. I don't even have to speak in German. Okay, so I think she is hot branding here by saying she's a know-nothing bartender. From where I'm standing, I see someone with style and confidence, not just a drink machine. Don't go branding yourself like that's all you are. Don't you go worrying about me, cowboy. The man upstairs warned me you were coming. I was just testing to see if you are who you say you are. Tell you what, let me give you something from our special reserve. I don't think you're looking for boots. Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. I was wondering where the blood was. I met some vampires outside, so I figured this was a vampire club. <laughs> you met some gods, honey. They're here to dance and have fun. So all these people are mortals? How do you think the head vampire gets his blood? They can't wait to share it with him. It's a special experience. He's the only real vampire here. Well, him and Bert. Bert? You met him already. Bert? It's gonna be the uh, here. bouncer, right? <laughs> This one's here to see the big guy. Show him upstairs, okay? Have fun, mate. <laughs> Good luck up there, cowboy. Says. Hope you find what you're looking for. Uh, howdy. It's Sam Walls to see you, sir. Uh, the guy who's been sending you all them V-mails. Yes, I know who you are, Samuel Walls. You have come here because you believe you can help our kin. The question is, are you first able to help yourself? I've been fixing myself for more than a century now. I don't think I need help. Then you must prepare to learn a most difficult lesson. We all need help, Samuel. I am pleased that you have come to receive mine. Dang, you scared the heck out of me. You must allow an ancient vampire his games. He will play them regardless. Please, sit down. What an absolute pleasure it is to meet you at last. I found your messages most intriguing. <laughs> Afraid there ain't much here in the way of intrigue. I'm just a lonesome cowboy looking for answers. You know, I receive emails every day from vampires seeking my help. You are the very first to seek my aid in helping others. This alone makes you intriguing. <laughs> well, dang. I think you're going to be sorely disappointed when you get to talking to me. I'm just honored you're giving me the time of night. I have unlimited time, Samuel. I am pleased to share some of it with you. 
Our kind can be rather set in their ways. It is inspiring to see someone so young and eager to learn. Yeah, well, I wasn't much for learning when I was alive. Just making up for lost time, I guess. <laughs> it sounds as though you have been handling your own life better than most. I was particularly intrigued by these revelations you had while walking in nature. Oh yeah, them. Well, I give walking the credit. Nothing sorts my thoughts out better. After a few decades, I started seeing patterns in the way we vampires think. Can you explain some of these patterns? I've tried to explain them to other vampires, but uh, it ain't never gone well. I could try, though. See, we tend to assume certain things just because we've been believing them since we were alive. <laughs> or we decide the world's against us just because we're hungry or tired or something. And when we start tackling problems that ain't real, <laughs> we ain't fixing our real problems. That make any kind of sense? Fascinating, Samuel. These revelations that you had in the woods, mortal psychologists have a term for them. They are called cognitive distortions. Cognitive who's he what now? <laughs> cognitive distortions. They are exactly as you described them. I will explain in a moment. Please, tell me about these specific revelations you had. Well, uh, I noticed how we stress ourselves out by making everything a battle of do or die absolutes. A high noon mind, I call it. Like that feeling you get right before a big shootout. I must confess I have no experience with this feeling. I engaged in mortal combat long before the age of gunpowder. But the sentiment you describe mirrors the words of my old friend, Marky Aurelius. <laughs> he used to say that the magnitude of life's challenges often turn us into our worst selves. You mean Marcus Aurelius? The Roman Emperor? Of course, his name was Marcus. Marky was a <laughs> Rome name. You mean you and the Emperor were... It was ancient Rome. Penetration was similar to <laughs> magic. Uh... <laughs> My apologies. I somehow forgot you were American. But let us discuss this high noon mine. I believe we can broaden your definition. Mortal psychologists call this phenomenon of binary thought polarized thinking, but I like to call it Nosferatu thinking. Nosferatu thinking? It means you are thinking in black and white. <laughs> I get it. That's pretty funny. I believe it encompasses the breadth of the distortion. One is not flatly weak or strong, good or evil, smart or stupid, a success or a failure. The truth is far more complex and colorful. Not every high noon gunfight ends in oblivion, correct? Yeah, that's true. Uh, getting shot still ain't fun, but it ain't the end neither. A perfect example, Samuel. Now, try to catch me using Nosferatu thinking. I will give you a series of statements, and one of them will contain Nosferatu thinking. I will repeat them if you miss it. If I do not drink blood, I will surely die. I mean, that's gotta be it, right? Death eventually comes for us all. Mortals will always fear our kind. Did you miss my Nosferatu thinking? Let me, if I do not drink blood, I will surely die. Is that no. Nosferatu thinking? No, Samuel. In this case, I am not arguing with reality. If we do not drink blood, we die. This is a fact of being a vampire. All right, Let okay. us continue. Death eventually comes for us all. Not that Mortals one. Mortals will always fear our kind. That one's right. Nosferatu thinking right there. I've met mortals who knew who I was and weren't scared. Very good, Samuel. And even if you hadn't, to say mortals will always fear us ends any hope that they might not. Always is such a terminal word, is it not? Would you like to discuss more of your revelations with me? Uh, Saloon thinking, which I still haven't really wrapped my head around. I so. realize that as vampires, uh, we can get the feeling of the power that comes with immortality and strength, but then we get hopeless and aimless over time. It's kind of like the fellow you see in the saloon at the bottom of a bottle of whiskey. Either he thinks he can fight everyone, or he's crying into them last drops because he thinks life's hopeless. It's saloon thinking. Two extremes that probably ain't true. A fascinating observation, Samuel. Your saloon thinking was described in my time as the battle between hubris and nemesis, the twin excesses of arrogance and self-pity. Oh man, it make me wish I'd gotten some schooling. Maybe I would have figured this stuff out earlier. You live forever, my friend. There is no rush. What you have identified is a phenomenon where individuals perceive either an illusion of control or a lack of control. I wrap my head around this. Okay. Mortal psychologists call this phenomenon you have described a control fallacy. Rarely do we have complete power over our situations or no power at all. But we create this illusion that stops us from attempting to change our perceived situations. 
Yeah, you're right about that. I used to think I'd never get away from my gang. Maybe that's what made me stick with them for so long. Yes, you see how cognitive distortions keep us from facing reality, whatever that reality may be. Of course, I am so old and powerful that I am always in control. Uh, I mean, it's probably that, right? But let's go through his statements anyway. Well, you're testing me, ain't you? That's a control fallacy right there. There wasn't any others, that was well, just that one. Samuel, I am indeed very powerful, but the cosmos holds no awareness of Andromachos. Of course, as you expertly pointed out with your analogy about the man at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, a control fallacy can be positive or negative. Listen to my next few statements and try to find a control fallacy. Simply let me continue if you do not detect one. The sun will eventually burn out. I will roam a cold, dead earth, and there is little I can do about it. I think that's probably factual. My kitty cat died. <laughs> I shall be lonely forever. That one's probably the control fallacy. I shall never feel the warm sun upon my skin again. That's probably I true. I didn't catch my control. The sun will eventually... My I think it's the kitty cat, cat one. Uh, I'm sorry about your sweet kitty, but you could always pick up a new one. Or there's lots of them just waiting for a loving home, so you don't need to be lonely. <laughs> it was just an example, Samuel. Well spotted. But I do speak from experience. I felt this way once when a pharaoh I was dating had our cat mummified. <laughs> I went into a murderous depression that nearly decimated the continent. But I had the power to help myself all along by adopting a new friend in need of a home. Oh, dang, don't let me get on your bad side. I doubt you shall see it, Samuel. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? See, I used to be in a gang. They were my whole existence. If you asked me who I was, I would have said, I'm a murdering bastard. Once I got away, I realized how small-minded that was. I was Sam before I was a murdering bastard, but that's how I was choosing to brand myself. My old gang's still around, and they're still branding themselves like that. They can't see themselves as anything but killers. Very astute, Samuel. I favor the clinical term, however, which is labeling. You correctly discovered that labeling is a reductive act. When we call ourselves names, even if we find them accurate, we create prophecies we are doomed to fulfill. For millennia, I thought of myself as a killer. It was not untrue that killing was how I made my way in the world. I was an unstoppable warrior and assassin. But with this label, I limited myself for ages. I did not only kill people, I also killed potential aspirations I might have had. See whether you can catch me doing some labeling in my next few statements. I am so old, I am ancient. Call me whatever you like, but don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> How shall I describe myself? Ah, uh, yes, I am a mass murderer. Well, that's about as clear a labeling as it gets. Uh, yeah, we vampires tend to do a lot of killing, but reducing ourselves to killers ain't doing us any favors. Excellent, Samuel. You are correct. Labels can be cages that we lock ourselves in. I was a mere murderer for most of my existence because that is how I labeled myself. Yeah, I did the same thing. Sam Walls, the murderer, reprobate, and good for nothing. Those are not how I would describe the Sam Walls I see before me. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? And that's it. I think that's all of them. Or at least the ones that were the most obvious to me. That you recognize the concept of cognitive distortions at all is most impressive, Samuel. What took me nearly three millennia to understand took you merely two centuries. Oh, come on, you're just flattering me. I'm just a dope stumbling his way through one life. Are you now? Tell me, Samuel, what kind of cognitive distortion are you exhibiting when you call yourself a dope? Uh, labeling, I suppose. Yeah, I'm doing some labeling. I gotta watch myself, huh? As long as we retain any humanity, we will have cognitive distortions. What we are aiming for is not to become perfect beings, but to understand and accept ourselves. As long as we can recognize cognitive distortions, we can address our real challenges. One cannot drink blood from a straw man, after all. Mm -hmm. huh. I ain't never heard that one before, but I like it. If it helps solidify the concept in your mind, then I am well satisfied. I know you came to learn from me, so I will do my best to honor your good intentions. Let us ensure that you understand the concepts of labeling, control fallacies, and Nosferatu thinking. 
I will give you a series of statements, and each one will contain a cognitive distortion for you to identify. I will begin. If I invite over my vampire friends, I know I'm going to have to deal with guano all over the place when they turn into bats at the end of the night. Uh, hmm. Is that lab? Is that labeling? Well, that ain't right. He's acting powerless, like a man clinging to the whiskey bottle. What Andrew? If I invite right. over my vampire, well, that there's a control fallacy, sir. You're acting like you've got no control, but you could lay down some ground rules for guests, or some newspaper. Yeah. I express concern to my friends that they have not been toilet trained. Very good, Samuel. Let me try another. I am Andromachus, the ancient darkness, the scourge of the Mediterranean, the mortal's bane. I mean, that's labeling, right? Well, that's definitely some intense labeling. Those are some hard names to get over. You are not wrong. Those names followed me for millennia. It was most stifling. Let me try another then. If my club's revenues do not significantly increase, I will end up living on the street. Uh, one of these. This one? That there's got to be Nosferatu thinking. There's a huge space between making a ton of profit and living on the street. Indeed, you are correct. I run my club at a considerable loss, but 3,000 years of banking interest means that money is not really an object to me anyway. Samuel, now I am not only intrigued by you, but also impressed. I would very much like to teach you my ways, but I must demand something of you first. Anything. I'm here to learn. You must receive therapy yourself. I will not have you seeing clients without a commitment to your own mental health. Oh, uh, now, hold on just a minute. I, I don't know that I need therapy. I'm feeling pretty good about myself these days. Samuel, we all need therapy to live in this world. You have been speaking in cognitive distortions since the moment you walked into my office. I have. I didn't even notice. They are most insidious, but I am here to help you identify and challenge them. You have walked alone for too long, Samuel. Allow me to share my experience with you. <laughs> well, all right, if you say so. I appreciate your taking the time to work on this old cowpoke. We have all the time in the world, Samuel. But for now, you must be eager for something fresh. Please, dance. Drink your fill. We will begin tomorrow. Okay, then. Well, sir, it's been an honor. You don't have to call me sir, you know. All right, then, Andromachos. Andromachos. <laughs> Andromachos. Andromachos. Just call me Andy. <laughs> all right, Andy. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I like Sam. He's funny. Dang. Look at all them mortals. Sweating, blood pumping. I am thirsty. There ain't no power on this earth that'll get me on the dance floor. Maybe I'll see if the bartender's got anything for me. If it isn't Clint Eastwood again, mm. how'd it go, cowboy? Seems I'll be sticking around. Guess I'd better get used to things around here. Good to hear. About time someone helped Andy with his work. Oops, you, sorry, I didn't mean to click that. How do you know so much about what Andy's doing? Tony, I can't go back, I don't think. Pillow talk? I'm his blood partner. No shit. How's a mortal get hooked up with an ancient vampire? I'm a rock climber. I stumbled into one of his lairs in Madagascar, found a cave while climbing a mountain, and there he mm. was, naked in a hot tub. Dang, <laughs> must have been a sight. You ain't kidding, cowboy. Didn't expect a luxury apartment with a gorgeous naked vampire inside of a mountain. We hit it off, and he asked me to come back here with him. I like an adventure, so I said, what the hell? I'll date the gorgeous Dracula. But what are you doing talking to me, cowboy? The blood's running hot on the dance floor, and these kids don't mind a little biting. There ain't no way I'm dancing. There's got to be a better way to get something fresh to drink. Reinhardt, look, it's the sexy old guy again. <laughs> you should buy us a drink, old guy. You'll probably get lucky. Actually, you'll definitely get lucky. Uh, pleasures of the flesh ain't exactly what I'm after tonight. That's because you haven't experienced these pleasures with us yet. Buy us a drink and you will discover great satisfaction, Bions. Uh,
I ain't buying you a drink. I think I'd be insulting your economic status. Mein Lieber, don't worry about us. We just like to feel special. We have lucrative jobs in IT. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you can help me. See, my printer died again. <laughs> Getting real tired of these things. Oh, please, we are here to party. But get a laser printer. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for the tip. That ink seems to be more valuable than blood. It's good advice. <laughs> they're, they're more expensive to buy, but they're cheaper to run. Okay. Uh, okay. I ain't buying you a drink. All I got are good old fashioned dollars. I like American money. All we have on our money are buildings. You have all the sexy old men. All right, I'll buy it. Which of them old men are sexy? I like Hamilton. His posture is just so powerful. There is a dollar coin that has Eisenhower's face on it. Oh, you are right. Eisenhower is, uh, how do you Americans say, uh, a snack? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. You like older men. I ain't buying you a drink. This stuff's terrible for you. Are you making a joke? We are at a bar. It's okay. He's just trying to be protective. Aren't you, Opa? <laughs> you know, I think the drinks here ain't strong enough for you, too. I ain't buying you a drink. You ain't exactly my type. Oh, we don't want to marry you. We just want to have fun with you. You kids are too much. Well, these kids just ain't gonna leave me alone. All right. <laughs> Stop teasing the cowboy, Kinder. They're just messing with you. Drinks are free here. <laughs> Dang, really? I ain't never been to a saloon with free hooch. Call it a drink exchange. Huh. So, everyone here knows they might be sharing blood? Only as long as there's consent. We like to create a safe environment here. Why don't you take Reinhard and Maxie here back to the kink room? <laughs> Wait, kink room? Mm-hmm. You're not in Kansas anymore, cowboy. We are not afraid of sex here. I'm from Missouri, but, uh, point taken. Nobody has to do anything they don't want to do in there. Just have fun and drink your fill, handsome. I'm sure I'll be seeing plenty of you. Maxie, Reinhard, this is one of our special... Oh, so, Oops. I'm Vampir. I'm thinking we are all getting lucky then. My neck scrubs with anticipation. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Guess I'm going to a kink room then. Thanks, Crimson. Okay. I knew a man who wore this much <laughs> leather couldn't be boring. <laughs> yeah, well, you got me pegged. But the crucifix doesn't get in the way. Is that what we are doing now? Give me the document and I will sign myself up for it. I really ain't in Missouri no more. Uh, look, I'm more into biting. Oh, your teeth look perfect. Are you going to bite me with those? That's the plan. Who's going first? Mm. Oh, me, me, me. We'll step right on up. Okay, so this is moving around, and I've got to click it at the right time, I guess. Du Domkopf, du hast mir in die Arterie gewissen. <laughs> I'm in the artery. Well, quit moving. Oh, das hat sich gut Okay, avoid the arteries. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Is it my turn yet? Well, sure thing. Come on over. Uh... Where'd your neck go? It's right here, waiting for you. Nicht meine Arterien. I've got her artery as well. Uh, down there, is it? Where'd your neck It's right here, waiting for you. I mean, how do we... I swear you moved. I didn't, Opa. I'm being a good girl. Oh, I don't like... Dang, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I can't... <laughs> There's things in the way. Oh, Reinhardt. Mm, the hot old vampire wore me out. Me too, Maxi. I feel as though I have set up a mail server. Mm, Reinhardt, mein Zucke Fledermaus. Ich bin so müde, um sexy zu sein. I will get us a taxi cab, Liebchen. Und du, Cowboy? Next time we will talk about that thing you mentioned earlier. Oh uh, yeah, sure thing, fella. You can help me with my new laser printer. <laughs> if I've had something to drink, I should probably get to my coffin. Samuel, wait a moment. I see you got your fill. Are you heading out? Yeah, I figure I could use some shut-eye. I locked up my coffin over at the storage center. Storage center? 
please, you can use my guest coffin. I insist. You must be well rested for the challenges ahead. Guess I got a big night tomorrow, huh? I should get a good day's sleep. Wonderful. Please, follow me. Well, dang. This is mighty plush. Guess it's one of them smart coffins. Smart coffin. Let's see what's on TV. Hey, I remember this movie. We were so proud to finally get some representation. I'm not sure I should stay up watching movies, though. Well, ain't much else to do in here. I think it's about time I hit the hay. Hope I'm cut out for all this. I wonder if you could have sat there and watched more of that movie. Maybe we'll get another chance. Samuel, good evening. I hope you slept well. Like the dead, as they say. I was hoping to save you some breakfast, but I've already sent them on their way. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'm still pretty full from last night. <laughs> them goth types were practically throwing themselves at me. I am not surprised. Perhaps I should be concerned that some of my guests will follow you home. Well, gosh. If I still had mortal circulation, I'd be blushing. Why are you so embarrassed, Samuel? Ah, hell. Guess we should just save it for therapy, huh? We gonna get started now? If you like. Why not? I'm eager to get going. Let loose, Doc. Very well. Let's start with the first question any therapist asks, then. What brought you to me? Why is becoming a therapist so important to you? Well, gosh, I remember what it was like. Being all angry, hungry, and scared all the time. <sighs> it ain't no way to live. When I see vampires acting the way I used to, I just need to show them there's more to unlife. And why is that up to you? You, of all people, know how lost our kind can be. Preying on the weak, dating mortal high schoolers. I've got to make them see their potential. That's what I'm here for. I know it. That is a lot of responsibility to place on yourself. <laughs> you got a funny look in your eye. Am I doing one of them distortion things? You are most perceptive. Yes. Perhaps you can tell me what it is. Probably the control you one? say you are here to make vampires see the world differently, in what way are you distorting reality? Well, I guess that's a control fallacy, right? I can't assume I'll be able to help other vampires the way I was helped. Very good, Samuel. Control fallacies are hard to avoid when one feels strongly about something. Your fate is not to transform every vampire you ever meet, even those who are your clients. You will do what you can do, and that is enough. But I am eager to learn how you develop this desire to help our kin find a different way of thinking. Well, like I told you when I first V-mailed you, I was a real nasty son of a bitch when I first became a vampire. When I look back and see what a no-account piece of shit I was, <laughs> I ain't nothing but embarrassed. It all seems pretty stupid to me now. Here we are living forever and all we can do is kill? That's the dumbest thing I ever did here. I am going to stop you for a moment. Stupid, no-account piece of shit, nasty son of a bitch, dumbest thing. Do you hear the way you are talking about yourself? With respect, sir, I earned all them names. I killed women and children. Half the ghost towns out west are my doing. I didn't think of nobody but myself. Pretend you are my therapist. If I sat here and called myself a no-account piece of shit, what would you tell me? Labeling, right? I'd say you were doing some labeling. And I guess I'd tell you to look at yourself a little more kindly. Extend the same compassion to yourself then, Samuel. How are you to move on from being a nasty son of a bitch if you are labeling yourself? If you wish to be a guide to other vampires, you must start with compassion for them and for yourself. So, now that you've gotten all that horrible <laughs> name calling out of the way, please tell me, how did you find your sense of purpose? Well, I was on the run, you see. The Wild West was ending and the Pinkertons were starting to get the better of my gang. I went into hiding and found a strange group of folks out in the country. <laughs> they knew I was an outlaw right away, but they didn't judge me for it. They didn't even care that I was a vampire. They welcomed me like a friend, even shared their blood with me. They taught me how to appreciate the beauty of the night and I started seeing things I'd never noticed before. They taught me my letters, philosophy, and how to question things instead of being scared of them. I think about them every day of my own life. They somehow freed themselves of all the judgments of the time and were better off for it. These must have been the 19th century American transcendentalists, yes? Yes, sir. I'm glad I died when I did, because their like just don't exist no more. Once my community died out, I started walking. That was something else they taught me how to do. There ain't nothing like having a walk and a think. I walked in nature for about 90 years and just took in all the grace and beauty of my country. I guess I was kind of selfish, though. I should have been helping other vampires the way the Transcendentalists helped me. Why? 
Why waste 90 years walking when I should have been helping others? Seems pretty obvious to me. I could have done a lot of good in that time. But your should turns that which you could find fulfilling into a duty. You create an extrinsic motivator. Good statements are another cognitive distortion, something created by your own mind. Nature asks almost nothing of you. Even if your should comes from a place of good, it creates undue pressure. And what do we do once we are pressured? We resent the shoulds. We procrastinate. And as you know, we have a lot of time to procrastinate. Huh, you got that right. Why do today what you can do next century? Mm. Exactly. Should statements remove the intrinsic joy from that which you find fulfilling. Uh, hold on though, ain't there some things we really should do? Of course there are things we must do. But nature herself tells us what they are. We invent the rest. Here, let me give you an exercise. Listen closely. See whether you can find the should statement that is a distortion. I should go to the vampire dentist. You know what they say. If you have bad fangs, you get bad blood. I should drink blood today. I should take my blood partner Crimson out on a date. Is it that one? Saying you should take Crimson out on a date is a should statement. <laughs> You've turned something you want to do into something you have to do. That's right, Samuel. You know, I couldn't be more pleased with you. Your time in nature was clearly well spent. Well, thanks, I suppose. Uh, but if you don't mind my saying so, I hope you're treating that mortal lady right. <laughs> Thank you. Please, ask her yourself. I imagine she would share her blood with you. You look like her type. <laughs> Hold on. I've only been in Europe for a couple of days. I ain't gonna go after my teacher's girlfriend. She does what she wishes, and that is why I chose her as my blood partner. Samuel, even if it beats no longer, you have a good heart. I think you will be an excellent therapist. So far, that good heart of mine hasn't amounted to much, but I'm willing to give it my best shot. You are uncomfortable with praise, aren't you, Samuel? Every time I say something positive, you find a way to negate it. I just don't think I should be doing any bragging. I spent my first 50 years killing. I spent the next 90 walking in the woods. I've tried to walk a better path since then, but I ain't no saint, Auntie. I did not say you were. Having met several so-called saints, I can attest that none of them were either. I understand your discomfort, Samuel. I, too, have done terrible things that I cannot erase. But is erasing the good I have done worthwhile? Well, I guess when you put it like that, it sounds kind of silly. It's another cognitive distortion, one that mortal psychologists call disqualifying the positive. I understand that the actions of your past are difficult to bear. But what we are here to do is accept reality with both its positive and negative aspects. I am not saying that you should disqualify your negative actions, but merely note when you disqualify the positive ones. Let us try an exercise. See whether you can challenge me when I disqualify my positive deeds. I am Andromochos, one of the most powerful vampires alive. Before I became the vampire I am now, I did exceptionally terrible things. I have defiled the innocent. I have killed countless people. The good I now do pales in comparison to the evil I have done. That one? That's the one. You're literally disqualifying the positive by comparing it to the evil stuff you've done. Well done, Samuel. I believe the recognition of this distortion will serve you well when you start to see clients tomorrow. Whoa, tomorrow? I only just started learning these here cognitive distortion things. I will, of course, be with you. You needn't worry. I can sense your instincts and will help you. But tomorrow, I just don't feel ready yet. My friend, we are never truly ready. But if it would ease your concerns, we can practice with further examples. Would that be helpful to you? Nah, let's move on. I think I'm good. All right, Samuel. You must be hungry now. I suggest you get a liter inside you. We have a big night tomorrow. Uh, how much is a liter? <laughs> just get enough to drink, Samuel. We will not be able to work if you are hungry or tired. Now, please excuse me. I do have a date with Crimson tonight. I suspect I shall not return until nearly morning. Oh, yeah, of course. I hope you have a nice night out, Mr. Andrew, uh, Andy. You as well, Samuel. Rest in peace. That's good. We've got five things to sort of learn and do now. Ah, uh, Samuel. Glad to see you are awake. Your Ooh. first client is on his way. All right, let's do this first client. What, already? Look, Mr. Andy, sir, are you sure I'm ready for this? Uh, these are people's brains I'm messing with. 
fear not, my friend. You are a powerful vampire in your own right. To be so young and have so much empathy is quite a gift. All you need to do is listen, and I know the truth will reveal itself to you. Shucks, wish I had your confidence. Well, to a limited extent, I can see the future. If you are about to misinterpret a client's distortions, I will set you back on the right path. You can see the future? It's not that impressive, really. You start to see the patterns after a thousand years or so. Uh, it's got to be disqualifying the positive, right? Well, dang. If seeing the future ain't impressive, that's got to be a distortion. Disqualifying the positive, it's got to be. <laughs> you barely require my aid as it is. If you need guidance, I will provide it to you telepathically. Don't think about it too much. When you are 3000, such things will cease to impress you. Let us look at your first client's case file. <laughs> okay. Dr. Drain, huh? You ain't got no first name? So let's have a look at this. So Dr. Drain, age 430, male, English. Intake information. Dr. Drain is a class of 1614 graduate of the Royal College of Physicians. He has been studying the nature of blood for the last several centuries. Became a vampire after a post-mortem blood transfusion experiment. Now runs a global pharmaceutical research company. Is now concerned that he has developed an addiction to a drug of his own formulation. Suggestion. Detected strong irritability on the phone. Investigate Drain's drinking and sleeping habits. Many vampires go by one name. Families and titles seem to become more abstract after a certain age. Huh. So is it funny that he kept the title? Indeed. You catch on quickly, despite your habit of disqualifying the positive. I will let you work now. I shall be meditating in my coffin, but I will sense when you need my help. But I... Samuel, I know you can handle this. Be yourself, and all will be well. <clears throat> Satan, bless it all, I hate flying! Oh, uh, hey there. God's blood, what on earth are you? Uh, my name's Sam. I'm the new therapist. Make yourself comfortable, Dr. Drain. And American as well. Good God, it's not enough for you lot to take over the world of the living. Even the halls of the dead aren't safe from you. Oh well, I suppose your lot are all into this touchy-feely stuff, aren't you? And ignorance, even American ignorance, is bliss, I suppose. Oh, sweet ignorance, how I do wish I knew thee. <laughs> He's a character, isn't he? Damn it, how am I going to work with this fella? I gotta ask Amy. Are you alright, Samuel? You gave me this fella as my first client? Why not? He is clearly hiding very little about his state of mind. How am I supposed to help him when he already sees me as the bad guy? Use your instincts, Samuel. Think about how you have felt in your darkest hours. What does this poor vampire want? I think he just wants to complain. Perceptive, Samuel. He can hardly stop himself, can he? So what, I just let him complain? Of course. Just give him a starting point to let it all out. It will make him feel better. Well, if you say so. Don't worry, Samuel. You are doing wonderfully. I will release your time now. Well, are you just going to sit there? I was just going to ask how your trip here was. My trip? My trip? My trip was bloody wonderful. Until my familiar got a flat tire and I had to fly 30 kilometers here as a bat. <laughs> I hate being a bat and I hate flying. Do you know an owl tried to eat me? Me, a creature that has lived for centuries, treated like common prey. I'm surprised he was even interested. You should see what an ugly little beastie I am when I transform. All I could do was screech and squeak until he went away. Well, I suppose I'm alive, in a manner of speaking anyway. You all right there, pal? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, I'm not, of course. I wouldn't be here otherwise. But for the sake of conversational integrity, fine. I take it you've read my case file and know why I'm here? You're here for an addiction problem. Yes. Embarrassing, isn't it? What's to be embarrassed about? I remember when Ulysses S. Grant was president. Didn't seem to bother him. Oh, well, of course. How wonderful it is that I share the mental failings of people who only <laughs> live a single lifetime. Hey, come on now. There's a part of us that's still mortal. Can't help that just like we can't help being dead. So I'm discovering. <sighs> Look, I just need some tips and I'll be on my way. Just give me all the tricks. Whatever one does to make addictions go away. Tips. Uh, let me think. Partner, there ain't no tips that'll magically cure you. But I'm here to listen. 
You know, I never in my life thought anyone would ever call me partner. Like partner, but not with a T. And I know how you English love your tea. Thank goodness we can still process tea. We cannot live on blood alone. I appreciate the concern, though. I must admit, I rather saw myself above this whole addiction thing. I tell you what, let's not worry about being above or below anything. You're here now, so let's see what we can do. What exactly are you addicted to? It's a form of plasma, a catalytic compound of my own design. Unnecessary. You're losing nope. me. Well, let me try to make it simple. Sorry. I have been able to replicate and even alter the molecular patterns that vampiric erythrocyte surface receptors receive. Our unique physiology gives us an increased ligand affinity, which is how we are able to process blood the way that we do. I can extend this receptivity and thus achieve my true goal, synthetic blood, freedom from the hunger that plagues us and hope for all humanity. Well, dang, that sounds pretty impressive, Doc. Well, it doesn't work without a vampiric catalyst, and that is the plasma I am addicted to. Pathetic, isn't it? I have spent 400 years trying to steal the secret of blood only to be engulfed by it, like Prometheus walking into a fireplace. Pathetic? <laughs> Doc, where the heck would you get a word like that? You've come up with a synthetic blood. Man, I can barely get my spurs on some mornings. Maybe you've had a setback or two, but give yourself a little credit, compadre. Credit? For wasting 400 years? Practically speaking, I'm in the same place as I was back when King James was in power. Only now I have a drug problem. <sighs> Perhaps I must face facts. My professor was right. Nothing we ever do will make a damned bit of difference. Samuel, listen to him. Do you recognize his patterns of thought? There's some distortions in there, ain't there? I knew you would sense them. Invite him to talk more about this failure of his. I'll do my best. Now hold on just a minute there, cowpoke. I've heard you talk a lot about failure. But it sure sounds to me like you ain't thinking clearly if you think you're a failure. I am a realist, that's all. Look at me. 400 years of study and still dabbling with leukocytes. Uh, so is he he's disqualifying the positive, right? I don't know many people who would call working with leukocytes dabbling. I mean, I gotta admit, I have no earthly clue what you're talking about. So unless you made up all them science terms, I think you might be doing more than playing with a chemistry set. Perhaps. But if we consider all there is to know about blood, I know precious little. But you know something? Yes, I concede I might know something about blood. I would hope so after 400 years. You still got more knowledge about blood than most, whether it's been four years or 400 years, amigo. Let's get back to what you were saying, though. I'm saying I am surely the oldest, most well-studied doctor in the world. I should have achieved more than this. Uh, so that's a should statement. Well, who said you should have achieved more? Isn't it obvious? I should have something to show for 400 years of work. And what happens if you don't? Absolutely nothing at all. Well, that's my point. That is not as encouraging as you think it is. <laughs> Ain't meant to be encouraging. Just showing you a little reality. Well, it's all my fault, really. I cannot seem to motivate my scientists to reach the necessary level of dedication. It's always shocking to me how little urgency mortals have around death. Control fallacy? So it's all your fault that you haven't come up with the perfect synthetic blood. It can't be anyone else's fault. Only I have the skill, the knowledge, and the experience. Pardon me for saying so, Doc, but it sounds like what you're doing is pretty dang complicated. It sounds to me like you're some kind of god if you expect control over life itself. Please. I am a scientist, not a spiritualist. It is not control I seek, but understanding. And are you ever going to have perfect understanding? No, of course not. I'm not a wizard. So how about not putting saving the world on one person, Doc? That is a simplification, but I take your point. As I was saying, now that I'm addicted to my own drug, I have joined the ranks of mortal celebrities in my utter irrelevance. And I'm thinking it's uh, labeling. <laughs> now, why would you go and label yourself irrelevant? What else do you call a man who has nothing to show after 400 years? I reckon I'd call him by his given name. Slapping a label on yourself don't do nothing but weigh you down. Oh, well played, cowpoke. Perhaps I am being a little dramatic. Yes, I'm aware that in reality progress has been made, enough to get to this point. But I didn't come here to ask for a pat on the back and to be told I'm a good boy. That ain't my department. 
but I hear they do some of that stuff downstairs. <laughs> yes, yes, we all know very well that the Continentals are more sexually liberated than we are. But as I say, I don't want all this therapy stuff. I just want to stop using this damn drug. Well, so what's so good about this stuff anyway? Why do you like it? I'm not certain. I don't remember what happens after I take it, but I wake up feeling, how do I put this, alive. Well, that don't sound so bad. A good nap can make me feel like a new man. I'm not talking about feeling refreshed. I mean I feel alive. As if I'm someone else. Someone who lives. And I wake up and find, oh gracious me, I am not depressed. You mean to tell me that you're going to sleep depressed every night? Oh, nothing of the sort. Oh well, I'm glad to hear that. You are assuming that I can simply go to sleep and my global scientific enterprise will run itself. Oh wait just a gosh darn minute, you're telling me you don't sleep? Yes, it's not as though we can get much deader already, and I have work to do. So you're not sleeping, and you're always depressed. I think we're starting to get somewhere. Oh, don't be such a bumpkin. If you are a sapient individual, aware of the world around you, depression is the only sensible reaction. It has nothing to do with sleep. Uh, that's black or white, right? Come on now, it's a big world out there, and different things are depressing to different people. Everyone reacts to things differently. Ain't it true that a sensible person, as you call him, might even be a different degree of depressed? Very well, I suppose I might have been using a bit of mild hyperbole. Mild is putting it mildly, buckaroo. Buckaroo? Now I'm even more depressed. <laughs> Regardless, I didn't come here to be a whiner. Oh, boo-hoo, one life is hard. Yes, we all know it's hard. Labeling again? Calling himself a whiner? Now why'd you say coming and talking to me makes you a whiner? Is that not what I currently am? Sounds to me like you're expressing yourself. Whiner is the word you used. Yeah, if you want to call it whining, that's up to you. But that's entirely your label. Oh, very well, call it moaning or whinging if you prefer. <laughs> moaning, whinging, belly aching, still all just labels. I don't believe I shall be using the term belly aching in any case, <laughs> but as I was saying, in the moments I wake up, I feel free. I suppose it must be what being an ignoramus feels like. I mean, I want to say labelling again because of this bit, but we've been doing a lot of that. You honestly think feeling good makes you an ignoramus? Yeah. The phrase ignorance is bliss is most apt, don't you think? But by calling yourself an ignoramus, you're making bliss something to be avoided. Yes, unfortunate how that works, isn't it? The only way to be happy is by being a fool. Partner, those are your labels. Try using something more positive and see how you feel. What shall I say that by being ignorant, I am a noble genius? Still just labels. Oh, very well. I suppose I might be discounting my experience. I don't know how to say this, amigo. <laughs> you really don't like letting yourself be happy. Honestly, I'm failing to see the problem with taking this stuff. Seems like it's making you get the rest you need and it makes you feel good. What's the problem? First of all, I do not need to rest. And partaking of this plasma does have downsides. What kind of downsides? I do not know what happens when I partake of the substance. However, when I wake up, I feel refreshed. But I also smell of blood and sex. Once I even woke up wearing a football jersey. It was most distasteful. <laughs> I guess you must be having some kind of good time. That is not my idea of a good time. I'm Dr. Drain. I am intelligent and worldly, not some ill-bred mo- I don't go gallivanting into godforsaken places to engage in depraved coitus and the consumption of dirty blood. It sounds to me like you're real good at denying yourself things. Well, I should be better at it. Should stay. You know, Doc, a wise old vampire recently told me something I'm about to tell you. You keep talking about the things you should be doing. You, compadre, are shouldn't all over yourself. <laughs> shouldn't all over yourself. Oh, well, that is vivid, isn't it? I can now add incontinence <laughs> to my already considerable list of faults. I'm being serious. I'm listening to you tell me I should be doing this, and I shouldn't be doing that. But who gave you all them shoulds and shouldn'ts? I don't know. It shouldn't matter, should it? I've been dead for over 400 years. It's the oldest stuff that sticks with us, amigo. We all got traumas. <laughs> Heck, we're dead, man. That's traumatic no matter what. But what we gotta start with is you. You've been through a lot. Don't rope yourself up so tight. Listen, we're doing good work already, I know it. Now, let's not push too hard. 
I would really like you to think about where all them shoulds are coming from before we meet again. And be good to yourself, all right, partner? Don't feel like you gotta go cold turkey on that plasma stuff. Yes, well, all the same. I'd rather not do it at all. Is that actually gonna happen, though? It might. You're dipping into it tonight, aren't you? I was thinking about it. <laughs> all right, partner. Just give yourself a little compassion. That's all I'm asking. I'll admit, you've given me some things to think about. Not pleasant ones, mind. You can handle it, partner. You're way smarter than I am. Yes, well, that is certainly true. Very well. I shall do some reflecting, in as much as our kind can reflect. I shall see you in precisely four weeks, then. Farewell, Sam. Masterfully done, Samuel. I knew you would do well, but that doesn't make me any less pleased. Got an achievement there for having a flawless client session. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we did do quite well. I mean, in, I expect as the first one, it probably threw some of the more obvious uh, things at us, but still, yeah, that's not bad. Well, that was a hell of a rush. That fella's holding on tighter in a holster to a gunslinger's hip. It felt real good to help him look at himself a little more kindly. Could Samuel treasure this feeling, but also rest. Go downstairs, get something to do. Next week, you shall see a new client. I think they will be an interesting challenge for you. I bid you good evening, Samuel. Rest in peace. You too, Andy. Well, I guess it's time I got me some grub. Are we gonna go straight in the coffin? Maybe. No, back in the bar. Well, that's it, I guess. My first client. Can't believe I'm doing this therapy stuff already. I sure could use a drink. I'll check in with Crimson. Well, if it isn't Yosemite Sam, how you doing tonight, partner? I'm better already hearing from someone from the States who knows the lingo. I'm not from any states, cowpoke. District of Columbia girl here. I figured you must have been coastal. Uh, you sound a little more uh, polished than I do. You should hear my German. Oh, uh, <laughs> maybe some other time. My brain's full tonight. I had my first therapy session with a real client. Oh, yeah? How do you think it went? I reckon it was a bullseye on my end. You should have seen me. Labeling. Blam. Disqualifying <laughs> the positive. Kapow. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Someone has got to sort these vamps out. They know how to hold on to their problems. You ain't kidding. Living or dead, once people hit 70, they get pretty dang set in their ways. You know Andy still uses a typewriter? I can't get that gorgeous man to see the light. Keep it up, cowboy. You're a breath of fresh air for these ancient ones. Anyone ever tell you you're wise beyond your years, Crimson? You must have had some life. Afraid I'm exactly as wise as my years. How old do you think I am, cowboy? Yeah, I was gonna say maybe 25. You couldn't be much older than 25. Aren't you a sweetheart? I'm 50 years young. What? 50? <laughs> <laughs> I tied around that age and I looked like shit. But you ain't a vampire. Like I told you, I'm Andy's blood partner. He shares his blood with me too, just not enough to turn me into one of you. I've been 30 for a good while now. <laughs> but you ain't joining our team? Sounds like a story. Not for tonight, buckaroo. I bet you're thirsty after a big night. Andy told me to give this to you. Oh yeah, what is it? We had a group of Americans come in last week who donated their blood. Andy can't stand the stuff. He says the blood glucose levels are too high, but he thought you'd appreciate it. Oh, it ain't so bad. I gotta ask, though, what does Andy's blood taste like? To me, it tastes like life itself, cowboy. I ain't sure I understand. Never you mind. Look, Tex, I've got some customers to serve, so go enjoy your juice, okay? Oh, <laughs> of course. I'm keen to get some rest anyway. You have yourself a fine night, Crimson. Is my incredible protege. Okay, but I think we'll leave it. There. It looks like we're going to head into our second client now, so I'm going to leave it there for this time. Thanks very much for watching this first episode of Vampire Therapist. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it as well. I mean, I saw in some of the Steam reviews people saying that they'd wish they'd um, uh, played this game when they were sort of starting their their psych course and stuff. It's just, um, I think. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means at all, but I, I think in terms of you know some psychiatry principles and stuff, I think it's it's fairly. Uh, 
you know, fairly accurate, I think. Um, it did say at the beginning, didn't it, that it had uh, sort of consulted with uh, professionals. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, if you're enjoying it as well, if you could hit that thumbs up button, that'd be appreciated, as would be, you know, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of it. Um, anything you like, really, the story, the sort of psychiatry elements, uh, even the art style, characters, whatever you like. I'm, uh, as I said, enjoying it a lot. Um, and if you're watching this and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.